Did you know that God wants you to be physically healed? That it's His will for you to be well physically every time and all the time? I'm glad you're a part of tonight's service. We're going to dig into what the Word of God says about your physical healing. As we talk about this uh, subject of physical healing, there are several views that uh, people take toward the subject of physical healing. And uh, we're going to look at each one of these views and try to respond to them with the Scriptures, with the Word of God. But the bottom line is God is interested in your physical healing. And I'm going to make a radical statement, a very, very bold statement just right up front as we begin a new series uh, this week, is that it is the will of God for every human being to walk in physical health. Sickness is never God's plan. It's never in God's heart for anyone to be sick. It's not His will for people to be sick. It's not God's will for anyone to die from sickness and disease. Now, I've said all those things, and we're going to unpack it from the Word of God. And we're going to take this approach. We're going to look at the different views that people have toward healing. Uh, the first view that we hear when we talk about divine healing is that God isn't interested in healing our physical bodies. He's only concerned about our souls. He's only concerned about our eternal destiny. Our physical body is really not a concern whether we die young or die old or whether we have sickness or disease, his main concern is for your soul. Now, people make those kind of statements, but they don't really think about it in line with the Word of God. Notice 3 John, the third epistle of John, chapter 2. 3 John chapter 2 says, Beloved, I wish or I pray above all things that you may prosper and be in health, just as your soul prospers. Now, this is the Apostle John writing to uh, a church leader called Gaius in a particular church, but we could also say this is God speaking through John to each one of us. And here's what God is saying, that God desires and that He wishes and He desires above all things that you may prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. Over in Matthew chapter 10, verse 7 and 8, when Jesus commissioned the 12 disciples to go into different cities, here's what he said. As you go, preach, saying the kingdom of God is at hand. Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out demons. Freely you have received, freely give. Again, Jesus commissioned his 12 disciples and later the 70 to go, and the first thing he told them to do was heal the sick. You know, Jesus is the will of God in manifestation. Jesus came to show us what God the Father is like. And here he said that healing of the physical body is a top priority with him. It's God's will for you to be healed. God wants you to be well. And then Acts chapter 10 and verse 38, this is the Apostle Peter preaching uh, to the Italian band, the Italian group there uh, in Acts chapter 10, and he's recounting and reviewing the ministry of Jesus, and here's how he summed up the ministry of Jesus. Looking back at his ministry, Peter said, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, who went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. Notice what Jesus did. He went about doing good and healing, not some, but all. If Jesus is the will of God in manifestation, if he came to reveal God's will toward you and me, right here when he healed all, he is declaring it's God's will for all to be healed. So this first viewpoint is clearly not scriptural. God is interested in our healing. He is interested in the health of our physical bodies. Of course, he's interested in our spiritual condition. And of course, he's interested in the condition of our soul. And obviously, he's concerned about our eternal destination and whether we go to heaven or hell. But he is equally concerned 
about your physical health, your physical body. As a matter of fact, Jesus, it talks more about his ministry of healing than it talks about him referring to the soul of man or the spirit of man. In fact, Jesus would heal people so that it would open up their ears and would grab their attention so he could minister to their soul and talk to them about their spiritual condition. One preacher said it very aptly. Healing is the dinner bell of the gospel, where people are being healed of their sicknesses and diseases. They are drawn to learn more about the goodness of God. They're, they're drawn to learn more about God concerning their soul and their spiritual condition. No, no, I believe it is God is very concerned about our physical condition. The second viewpoint toward healing, which I think personally, having been in the Appalachia area and actually uh, several states, lived in several states, among the church, the modern-day church, this second viewpoint is probably the most prominent viewpoint. Here's this viewpoint. Number two, the second viewpoint. Sometimes, here's what people believe. Sometimes it's God's will to heal, and sometimes it isn't. We are to simply pray and ask for God's will to be done. If it's his will to heal us, he will. And if it's not his will, he won't. We leave that in the hands of God. Let me read that again. Some people view healing in this way, that sometimes it is God's will to heal, and sometimes it's not God's will to heal. We are simply to pray and ask uh, God, ask for God's will to be done in the sick one's life, and if it's God's will to heal them, he will, and if it's not, he won't. Again, when we hold this viewpoint up under the light of the Scriptures, it doesn't stand. Here's what it says, the Word of God says in 1 John chapter 5. I love this passage, 1 John chapter 5, verse 14 and 15. Now this is the confidence that we have in Him, that if we ask anything according to His will, He hears us. And if we know that He hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we've asked of Him. Somebody said, see, that's exactly right. We're to pray and ask if, for God's will to be done. No, that's not what the Apostle John said here. Let's break it down. This is the confidence that we have in Him. If you're born again, you're in Him, and this is the confidence that you have. What is it? That if we ask anything according to His will, He hears us. So what he's saying here is you have to know the will of God before you ask, you need to know what God's will is concerning a situation before you ask. Now, how are you going to know God's will concerning healing? You would have to go to His Word, find out what His Word says about it. God's written Word is God's will. Psalm 107.20, for example, says, He sent His Word, God sent His Word, and healed us. God sent His Word, Jesus, and healed us. It's obvious. Psalm 103. We love this psalm. We quote it very often. We sing it in certain uh, hymns and psalms. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all of his benefits, who forgives all your iniquities, who heals all your diseases. It's as much God's will for you to be healed of all your diseases, according to Psalm 103, as it is for you to be forgiven of all your iniquities. Actually, the truth of the matter is, on the cross, when Jesus died on the cross, he not only took the sin of man, he also bore the sicknesses of the human race. Somebody said, well, if Jesus has taken and borne the sicknesses of the human race, how come there's so much sickness and disease? Why are the hospitals full of sick people? Well, I'll answer that question when you can answer this question. If Jesus took all of the sins of the world when he shed his blood on the cross, why are there still people that are called sinners? Why are there still people who haven't accepted Jesus? The bottom line is, what God provides at the cross, it's up to you and your free will to receive it. God has already done all he can do about your forgiveness. Now he's waiting for you to accept that forgiveness. God has done all 
that he's going to do about your physical healing. But it's up to you to accept the healing that Jesus paid for at Calvary's cross. Amen. So then John says, and if we know that he hears us. How do we know that God hears us? When we pray uh, according to the will of God. I would encourage you, before you pray for healing, go through the scriptures and find all of the promises that guarantee you your right to be healed. They're from, they're from the beginning, from Genesis all the way to Revelation, God's guarantee of your physical healing. You may be lying there right now on your deathbed. You may have cancer. You may have a disease. You may have a loved one who right now is suffering sickness and disease. You may have someone with COVID-19 who's on their deathbed. You may yourself have some type of a complication and you don't have the confidence that God wants you healed because you've heard this second viewpoint so many times. Well, if God wants me healed, he'll heal me. And if he doesn't, he won't. After all, God is sovereign. But that's not how this works. God provided healing for you. Jesus took your sickness. Jesus took your cancer at Calvary's cross. Jesus took your COVID-19. Jesus bore your pneumonia. Jesus took your arthritis. Jesus took your disease at the cross. Close your eyes and look at him. He has your sickness. It was in his body. And if Jesus bore and took your sicknesses and diseases, you don't have to bear them. You can reach out by faith right now and say, I take Jesus as my healer. I take and I receive my healing. 1 Peter 2, 24 says that by the stripes of Jesus, we were healed. See, when you become equipped with the knowledge of the will of God in this area, as in any area, you can pray with confidence in Christ. He says, if we know that he hears us, and when we pray in line with the word of God, we do know that he hears us. If we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we have asked of him. When you pray in line with the word of God, when you pray in line with the scriptures, and now we're talking specifically, specifically about physical healing, you can know that you have received your healing even before the symptoms leave, even before you can feel any change in your body. You can believe, you can know that God heard you because you prayed in line with the Word of God. And because you know that God heard you, you can know that you already have the petitions that you've asked of Him. So this viewpoint that, well, I'll pray, and if it's God's will, He'll heal me, and if it's not His will, He won't, is an ungodly and an unscriptural prayer. And it will hold you in bondage. It will, you'll die praying that way hoping that somehow maybe God might hear you. You will die. No, it's available. Healing has been provided you through Jesus, through his stripes. He's waiting for you to reach out with the hand of faith and say, I take my healing right now. Then what do you do? You begin to thank God that you're healed. Oh, glory to God. A miracle has happened in your heart. You know in your heart that you're healed. You can't explain how you know, but you just have a confidence in your heart that you've received it. Others may look at you and think you've lost your mind, but you haven't. You've gained your mind. You've gained the mind of God. Hallelujah. And that miracle that's transpired in your heart will show up in your body. It may take a second or two. It may take a minute or two. It may take an hour, maybe a day, maybe a couple of days. But you will begin to improve the very minute that you receive your healing. Well, that's all the time I have for this morning. We'll continue this next week talking about it's God's will for you to be well. God bless you and have a great week. 